Hi guys, and welcome to a Hector Lecture Guide to the Fight the Voidcast Days Extreme. This is Golbez. For this fight, before you begin, you're going to want to agree clock spots with your group. As you only need these for spreads, it's entirely up to your group how you want to do these. There's no rhyme or reason as to how you need to be spread. You're also going to want light parties with one tank, one healer, and two DPS. You should have a north light party and a south light party. Within your light parties, you also want to be able to split them into groups of two at different times. For that, tanks and melee stay middle, healers and range go out towards the edge. There are also going to be several times where your light parties are going to have to get into position while moving through the boss or towards a wall. For that, you should have a priority system for whichever way you're going, which light party goes which direction. I'm here showing that if you're going through the boss, you can have the group one go left and group two go right. And for the same thing, but if you need your partner stacks, just have the healers and range go further out. Finally, a single mechanic is going to require you to split into your roles. So you just need to know agreed role stack positions. Uh, the most standardly found version of this is tanks in the north, DPS in the south, and healers to either east or west, whatever's easier. The fight begins with the boss casting Terror Storm. This is going to have two giant meteors spawn on two of the intercardinals diagonally opposite each other. These will slowly move towards their corners, and the group just needs to adjust to not be in those corners. Doesn't matter which one you go to. The boss will cast Lingering Spark. Make sure that you stay put after the meteors explode, because Lingering Spark drops a puddle underneath every player. Wait until the cast bar finishes, and then move to dodge it. The boss will then cast Phases of the Blade. This is going to cleave in front of them, similar to normal mode, but then immediately afterwards you need to move through as there's a back cleave. The boss will cast Binding Cold, which serves as the raid wide for this fight. Be aware that Binding Cold also comes with a kind of spicy Frostbite dot. Just make sure that if anybody's super low that you top them up before this dot gets them all the way down. Next one's a pretty tricky one. This is Gale Sphere. Gale Sphere is similar to normal mode, going to have the boss spawn four clones, which jump off to different directions. Unlike normal mode, where it was either clockwise or counterclockwise, these have a different pattern. The first two will always go north and south, though which one they go to first of those two is random, and the third and fourth will always go east-west. Again, between the two of them, totally random. Orbs are going to appear, showing for each side which line AoEs are going to shoot out. With this particular pattern, first it's going to be the ones in the north, then the ones in the south, then the west, and then the east. Because of how the clones spawn, you only need to remember the first clone that spawned and the third clone that spawned to be able to know all four of them in the order in which you need to dodge them. Move to avoid the first set of AoEs. Before the second set goes off, the boss will cast Arctic Assault. These are those ice spikes that you'll have seen in normal mode. You need to make sure you both dodge the second set of orbs and are in a safe spot from this. Dodge the third set of orbs, coming from the west this time. And then dodge the east set of orbs. Note that these last set are always going to be north than south or south than north. These are the only possibilities, and you only have to go so far as to just outside of the boss's hitbox, really, to be able to avoid them. At the very end, the boss will cast another phases of the blade, so make sure that you dodge behind, and remember to go through to the front afterwards. Next is Void Meteor. This is a dual hitting tank buster that targets both of the top two players in aggro, so make sure your off tank is second in aggro. This is multi-hit tank buster. It's going to hit four times with a weak, small cleave AoE before the fifth one that hits very hard. That's the one you need to be worried about. The boss will now cast Asdaja's Shadow. No cutscene this time. Instead, the sword becomes infused, and this is followed immediately by Black Fang, which serves as an ultimate attack. Heavy raid-wide damage, so make sure to shield and mitigate. From this point onwards, every time the boss casts Adaja's Shadow, they're both going to empower their sword, but there's going to be a tell you need to look for. There's always going to be rings emanating from the boss, but if these are small, say they're only about the size of the boss's hitbox, 
This is signifying that the boss is storing a specific type of attack. In particular, if you see small circles growing out of the boss, this is a point-blank AoE or out that will always be accompanied with light party stacks. The boss is not going to do this immediately, this is stored for later. If instead you see the circles emanating and they're almost the size of the entire arena, these significantly larger circles, they may look similar, are signifying a completely different type of attack. Instead, if you see the larger circles, this is a donut AoE or in that's always going to be accompanied with every player having a spread marker. Let me show you the out and light party stacks first. Be aware that in addition to empowering the boss, Adage's Shadow also comes with a unique tank buster. The top player in aggro is going to get three hits of a tank buster. These need to be mitigated as they hit quite hard. Every hit gives one stack of a debuff. If any tank gets three stacks of that debuff, they're going to die. This kills even through invuln. It's like a thrice comes ruin. So at some point in time, your off tank needs to provoke. Whether or not they do this after the first hit or after the second hit is entirely up to you. You can decide what you want to do mitigation-wise, but you need to make sure that no tank takes all three hits. The boss is now going to immediately face towards a player and cast Phases of the Shadow. This is like before, the front cleave and then the back cleave, but it's going to be followed by the two stored mechanics afterwards. So we dodge behind, we dodge to the front, and we want to start getting out of the hitbox because we're going to get our light party stacks. The out goes off, and then shortly after, the stacks. You can slide in if you want to to get your melees uptime, or the stacks are so large your melees can just move in after the out, and they can reach. Let's look at the other possible pattern. If instead you get the large circles, reminder, this means that you're going to get an in and spreads. Deal with the tank buster exactly as I described previously. This time, when Phases of the Shadow is cast, dodge behind, wait for the first cleave, dodge through, but stay in the hitbox, move near to your spread position, but don't actually leave the hitbox yet. The in's pretty slow. Now head out and spread. Regardless of whichever mechanic you just had, I recommend that you stay loosely spread because this next mechanic can be quite confusing and you need to be able to see what mechanic you just got. This is called Double Meteor. First off, a random tank and or healer and a random DPS are going to get a flare marker. One healer is always going to be emanating a knockback and there's going to be a tower in the north that requires three people to soak it and a tower in the south that requires two people to soak it. This may look really confusing, but it's actually pretty formulaic and has a very simple solution. Take the healer with the knockback, stack the middle. Try to make sure you're perfectly middle. There's a nice little yellow circle on the ground to tell you you're in the perfect spot. Have all of the DPS always go north, and all of the rest of the tanks and healers go south. Now, your flares can't take the tower, so your flares are going to position to get knocked back away, but still staying on their side. So the DPS in the north, the tank healer in the south, and the other players are going to get knocked back to the tower on their side. Even if you don't quite get knocked back perfectly into the tower, there's time to adjust afterwards, and same for the flares to get further out. Be aware that as the towers are getting soaked, the healer in the middle will get tethered towards the boss's dragon. They should take one small step south. After the meteors go off, make sure you don't go through middle if you're a tank and healer heading back towards the boss, as the dragon is going to cleave through the middle in a very wide cleave. There's another Azdaz's shadow that's going to be loaded up. Again, look at the tell, and remember what's been loaded here. Because this is going to be stored for a while, I personally, what I like to do is I type in the chat out just to myself in party chat, so that the next time that I need it, I can cheat and see what it was. Deal with the tank buster as described before, making sure the swap after the first or the second hit. Now, instead of immediately using this, the boss will cast Void Stardust. Void Stardust, for this, have your group 1 go to the north, your group 2 go to the south, because we will need to be in light party shortly. There's going to be two meteors that start to spawn and show their AoE as a telegraph in one of the corners in the north and one of the corners in the south. 
the group should position near to that. You're then going to see that same sort of rotating pattern of AoEs that you saw in normal mode, but with less of a tell. There's no arrows this time. Position so that you're not in the initial AoE, and you're not about to get hit by the second to give yourself more time to dodge. Wait for the first hits to explode. Right about here, you're going to get two-person enumeration markers. After the first hit goes off, everyone can dodge into the corner. When it's safe, tanks and melees should move in towards middle so that you're in your groups of two that you need to resolve this mechanic. Immediately afterwards, the boss will cast one of two mechanics. Eventide Fall requires you to be in well, light parties because it's line stacks that target each of the healers. You're already there, so just move in a little bit to make sure that everybody can use in range of heals. Be aware that each hit gives you a magic vuln, so you can't get hit by more than one line stack. There's no cheesing it by running from one to the other. The other possible mechanic we could have gotten here was Eventide Triad. For this, it's roll stacks. One random tank, one random healer, and one random DPS are going to get targeted with the cleave. This is why we split into tanks in the north, DPS in the south, and the healers need to go to whichever east or west spot is nearer to them. Again, magical vuln stacks mean that you can only take one of these. There's a Binding Cold Raidwide, another Void Meteor Tank Buster, remember that last hit hurts harder, and the boss will cast Phases of the Shadow, finally using the Stored mechanic. Hopefully you've written it down somewhere so you remember it. Dodge the initial front cleave, then the back cleave, and make sure you resolve the mechanic as was stored previously, in this case, out and light party stacks. Now the boss is going to cast Terra Storm again, but with a slight twist. Once again, two meteors are going to spawn on diagonally opposite, but on random inner cardinals otherwise. These will slowly start moving out. Don't commit to any one corner yet. The boss will cast Arctic Assault, and an entire side of the arena is unsafe. There's now only one safe corner. In this case, it's the number one way mark, or northeast. Everyone's going to head that way, but we're going to get light party stacks at the same time, so group one stay in, Group 2 go out towards the edge. If you want to be nice to your M2, this would be a great chance for R1 to swap with them just for this mechanic to make sure that you have, well, melee up time for this whole thing. I presume with better gear, you might be even able to do a 5-3 split and get your tank in there as well. Binding Cold Raid Wide next. And now, really the final new mechanic, and it's not a fully new mechanic. The boss is going to cast Gale Sphere again, and just like before, four clones are going to go off. What makes this more difficult this time is that you're now going to get one of two mechanics right at the beginning. Either Light Party Stacks, or two-person enumerations. Let me show you the version with the enumerations first. You want to dodge this mechanic while also staying in your two-person stacks. What we've done here is we've had Group 1 go north, Group 2 goes south, and we just have our healer in range adjust a step north towards the north wall, and the healer in range in the south a step towards the south wall. The first AoEs go off at the same time as the first enumeration stacks. Once again, Arctic Assault, and now the second and third hit are identical to the first time you saw Gale Sphere back at the beginning of the fight. Dodge these as normal, but as you're dodging the fourth hit, now you're going to get the opposite mechanic. Since we had the two-person stacks the first time, we're now getting light party stacks. As I mentioned, we're running through the boss, so group one are going to go left and group two are going to go right, but this is relative to where they're facing, so from our perspective, it's opposite. Make sure you dodge the final orbs and are far enough apart in your groups to be able to take the stacks. If you're worried about people dying here, just heavily mitigate this. There's a decent chance that you might want to even tank LB this just to make sure that everything's safe. Here's the other version of Gale Sphere. This time I'm going to show it if you got the light party stacks first. Group 1 in the north, group 2 in the south. Both groups are just going to adjust into the first safe spot. Sometimes you won't have to adjust at all. Sometimes it will be middle safe first. They dodge the second orbs and the third orbs exactly the same. And the only thing that's different this time is now we get the enumerations at the end. Still, group 1's going to go left relative to the way they're facing. Group 2 goes right, but the healers in range are going to go further out. That's probably the hardest mechanic in the fight, so if you made it past this, you're probably on pace to clear. 
This will always be followed up by a phases of the blade. This is just a standard front and back cleave. Deal with it the same way you did way at the beginning of the fight. And now there's not really anything new. You get a Binding Cold raid wide. You get Azdaja's Shadow again. It's going to show a tell. Remember to load this up, write this down somewhere as you're holding on to it for quite a while. Deal with the Tank Buster with the three hits. Remember to both mitigate and to swap. And now the final new-ish mechanic is there's another Void Stardust with a slightly different pattern this time. Still have your Group 1 go north and your Group 2 go south. This time, the first AoE is not going to be in the corner, which means that the initial safe spot is going to be, well, in the corner next to them. So both groups should adjust near to that AoE, and before it goes off, go into the corner. Once again, you'll see the pattern of the AoEs, but the corner will always be the initial safe spot for this one. Enumerations appear again. Wait for the AoE to go off and dodge into the first AoE. When it's safe, Tanks and melees just need to slide in so they can take the two-person stack away from the others. Don't move. Lingering Spark gets cast, and you want to make sure that you bait your puddles together. The only thing I'd recommend here is maybe have healers in range come in before the cast bar finishes so that all the puddles are together and they have an easier job trying to dodge them. You're then going to get an eventide mechanic. This will be the opposite of the one you had first. If you had fall before, this time it's triad, and vice versa. Deal with it the same way I mentioned before. There's now the phases of the shadow, and this is going to use up the stored mechanic from way before any of this. In this case, it's an in and a spread. Really recommend writing it down. It just makes it so much easier. Make sure for the end of the spread that you stay in, don't move too quickly, because that in is very slow. And from this point, it's entirely repeated mechanics. You get another double meteor, and as difficult as it was the first time, it's no different this time. Deal with it exactly the same way. You get another void meteor tank buster, make sure to mitigate it. Gale Sphere happens again, and the only thing that's different is that you might get a different order for the clones, and you're going to get the opposite order of the mechanics. So if it was Light Party stacks first, then two-person stacks, now it's going to be the opposite. Don't forget this is always followed by a Phases of the Blade to dodge behind and then through. You get a Binding Cold Raid Wide, another Azdaja Shadow loading up one final mechanic, the Tank Buster, and then immediately that loaded mechanic is used. No holding it for a really long time this time. Dodge the front cleave, dodge the back cleave, make sure you stay in, and then spread. When all that's done, the boss is gonna cast two Binding Cold Raid Wides, heal and mitigate through these with the dot they hurt before casting an Adazja Shadow. No Tank Buster this time, the boss is instead preparing for one final cast of Black Fang, which serves as the Enrage. You have until this cast finishes to kill the boss, or it's game over. And that's everything. That's everything you need to know for this fight. I hope you found this useful. I'm going to be honest, I desperately need to go to sleep because it's been a long day of animating. Uh, but let me know in the comment section uh, if you've got any suggestions, any tips, uh, if I've suggested anything that's going to totally ruin Party Finder. I want to hear it. Let me know. Anyways, take care, guys.